what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Premps, and yes, we are back again with another One Piece review. And today we're taking a look at One Piece 1029, titled The Tower. And I'm not gonna lie, it feels like ages since the last One Piece chapter, because we were on break for the last week. And it's just typical that we'd be on break after that huge Sanji reveal at the end of chapter 1028. But today it's all about chapter 1029. So this is your spoiler alert because if you've not read the chapter then this is your chance to go back and read it before coming back to this video and checking out my review because this was definitely another good one. Now the cover page is of Jewelry Bonnie having an eating contest with some sea otters and I'm not gonna lie my money's on Bonnie because that girl can eat but always good seeing the wider characters in the story regardless. Oda I'm still waiting for the cover story to return but I digress because the chapter literally starts off from where we left off last chapter and we see Sanji standing there unfazed as the shards of Queen's blade that shattered are hitting the ground and there's actually some still in the air and something that we've seen a lot of so far particularly from the beast pirates is the shock that anyone could stand up to queen or king or just any of the commanders really because they see them all as some untouchable strong figures which is actually hilarious because they have no idea who these straw hats are but they're all trying to work out what's going on here because Sanji literally didn't move and Queen's blade shattered. So as Queen gets to thinking, he's like, nah, 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 that can't be armament hacky because that's not quite how it works. And then Queen has an epiphany because for those of you who have forgotten, Queen used to work alongside Vinsmoke Judge. And he mentions here how Judge mentioned something about making humans more durable with an accelerated healing factor and enhanced physical strength too but most importantly having hearts of ice and it appears that queen has got things spot on here because that's literally what judge did and he did this with his kids but a wider question i had to myself when reading this is how much do the other pirate crews know about what's going on in the real world because i don't imagine germa are meant to be a secret and we were told that germa was stopping wars and so they would have been in the public eye so why wouldn't Queen have known about this power? And why is he so keen to see a raid suit? Surely in all the time he's been alive, he must have seen it somehow. But anyway, we also get a closer look at Sanji's thoughts because he's just thinking of the worst case scenario and not wanting to be like his brothers as we see a greyed out panel of Ichiji, Niji and Yonji. And it's evident that it's not only this power that Sanji worries about, because I mean power is power but to lose his emotions would be his biggest fear and I think that's something people are not talking about enough because Sanji is one of the more emotional members in the story and to be unable to feel would be the worst case scenario for Sanji and of course I am positive this isn't going to happen but it's understandable why Sanji would worry and also just as a side note we can see Sanji pulling his face back into shape and I recently dropped a video on Sanji and this being similar to what happened to Yonji on the Germa Kingdom so make sure you check that out too. But moving on, Sanji is still trying to comprehend what is happening to him and honestly he just needs a breather so he literally begins running away so he can process what is happening and I was a bit shocked here because the stakes are high. He has to defeat Queen regardless of whatever is happening but then he's worrying about what's happening with him and at this point Queen is chasing him asking him to see his raid suit and all the beast pirate fodder are there thinking yep Sanji's scared and they begin shooting bullets at him thinking they could take black leg Sanji out but the key thing to note here is that the bullets are indeed just bouncing off him but Sanji can still feel the pain as the bullets deflect onto the ground. We then pan away to see what's happening with Kid, Law and Big Mum 
and Kid is literally on the ground looking so beat up. We then find out that his head is in pain and it's quite interesting here because Law is referring to him as dead weight and he uses a counter shock attack in order to stop Big Mum from finishing Kid off. However, in the midst of this, Big Mum uses an attack named Stolen Fire in order to burn Law using Prometheus and then uses Napoleon to knock them down. And Big Mum here stands tall and undamaged as Law and Kid are on the ground having had better days. Now for those of you who may have forgotten, a few chapters back we found out that Hawkins had made a straw doll of Eustace Kid, and therefore Killer was unable to harm him as any damage he did would inflict pain on Kid. And this is exactly what was happening here. Kid couldn't understand why he had such a headache and Law couldn't understand why Kid was providing such a terrible showing. But it all becomes obvious because as we pan to Killer and Hawkins, we find out that Hawkins had been headbutting a pillar just to inflict pain on Kid and in turn wind up Killer who seemed to be the only one who knew what was going on. And in the midst of all of this, Hawkins was taunting Killer, telling him how terrible his luck is just given the fact that he actually ate a small fruit too. And it really is funny when characters mention luck, but in particular Hawkins, because one, he does use tarot cards, but two, if we're talking luck and the will of the D, then Hawkins most definitely chose the wrong side. And I mean, we see Killer's resolve here, as he not only tells the wider members of Kid's crew to not do anything, but also tells Hawkins that he'd exchange his life for kids if that's what it took. He acknowledges that one of the things Kid really wants to do is take down a Yonko and now he may actually have the opportunity to do it, Hawkins has taken it away from him. But Hawkins continues to taunt him and another thing about Hawkins that shocked me here is the fact that he really hasn't flipped sides. I thought he would have done this ages ago but he really is dedicated to the cause. He talks about how Big Mum and Kaida have dominated the seas for so long and that they can't be beaten and that his decision to join them was the right one. But Killer is having none of this as he starts to work out a few things in his head and he begins to ask Hawkins some questions. The first question being, what happens if the damage he takes has nowhere to go? And I think we all knew this was coming because a load of us predicted this but Killer cuts off Hawkins' left arm and Hawkins is in such pain and is in shock and asks why he would do something like that knowing that the damage would go to Kid and Killer responds that Kid has no left arm. And the second question that Killer had for Hawkins was if he removed the Kid doll, how many more lives did he have left? And that's when panic mode hit, because that was Hawkins' last life, as he draws his straw man's card and annihilation card in order to take on Killer. But that was nothing to fear for Killer, because Hawkins uses his terror cards at this moment to find out what the result of this battle will be, and he draws the tower card. And from what it looks like, it shows a tower falling. And as Hawkins says, this isn't what he predicted before Killer uses a sonic blade attack and takes out Hawkins and this is absolutely fantastic and one thing I'm looking forward to is finding out if Hawkins legit lost his own left hand. But now with Hawkins' defeat we pan back to Kid and see he finally feels like himself and he states how he's never felt better and now it looks like we're really going to see what Kid is capable of in this battle against Big Mum and I just love the final panel we get of Killer saying go for it partner knowing that he's done his bit in this battle to give his captain the ability to have some fun and that brings the chapter to an end with no break next week and it's fantastic because all the kid haters are about to see what he can actually do and so I hope Oda really doesn't nerf him anymore but this was truly another great chapter and Oda continues to deliver week on week and at this point I think we're completely spoiled. 
In the grand scheme of things, there was definitely quite a bit touched on in this chapter, with Sanji figuring himself out and Killer's resolve, and now the freeing of Eustace Captain Kit. I'm definitely excited to see what else Oda has in store for us. But as usual, if you like anything I've had to say, then please make sure you leave a like on the video, and if you want to support your boy, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when I drop more reviews just like this. Say.